Uh, then, of course, no exuberantly costly or screaming outfits. Um, church is not the place where we attract the attention to ourselves or outside, wherever we go. We attract attention to Christ, so our outfits should be moderate. No short above the knee skirts or shorts because they reveal your thighs, which is again is a private part of your body. No bra and panty type swimming suits, bikini, no tight one piece. And again, it is so obvious to me, at least at this point, that how can it, I, I just, it just, my hair stands on end when I think that I, I, I saw it. And some, some Christian women even post pictures on Facebook of them being on the beach in a bra type of a swimming suit and their little undies. And I, and I look at it, I just cannot comprehend. You're wearing underwear in front of the world. And you're supposed to be a modest woman who guards her purity, who is separate, who is set apart, who is holy, who is blameless. Um, so, but I'm teaching you, think, think, uh, just challenge yourself to think about the things. This is extremely important. Um, do not love the world, nor the things of the world. Of course, no attire of a harlot, anything that's seductive, that is obvious. Tight things, transparent things, we already touched upon that. No rice pants, pants or skirts revealing your stomach. And this is so popular these days. Everybody just wants to reveal their little belly button and with a little, it just, um, it just not, not something that a Christian girl or young lady um, should expose. This is a private part of your body. Your stomach is a private part. So you just don't expose the private parts. Then, of course, it's, again, it's obvious, but it is so popular these days, a lot of young girls, they wear pajama pants. Those stay in the bedroom. That's why they're pajama pants. And the last thing is no cakey makeup. This is just not something that a Christian young lady should attract a godly Christian young man with. <laughs> you know, because you'll just look like, a, as Kevin, my husband always says, painted barn. Sorry, but it's true. It's true. As an older sister in Christ, I'm sharing these things with you, and I, and I hope that you understand I'm not jumping on you, and I not try, I'm not hating on your swag, as they would say these days. No, no. I'm just trying to really be open and bring these things to your attention and put a finger on it and literally tell you it's obvious. This is not the way things should be. And once again, I'm directing you to um, my detailed study on modesty. It's called Christian Women in Modesty, I hope, something like that. Yeah, and it's on YouTube, so you'll be able to find it. I'll go to crytogod.com website, and I'm sure it's somewhere there in our, um, somewhere there. You must understand that when you wear any of the clothes listed above in public, you are not modestly dressed. And at any moment, you can become a stumbling block to your brother or sister in Christ. In fact, you think that you're dressed when you're not, since all your body parts are revealed and exposed. You literally walk around naked. A lady who guards her purity will ask herself these two questions before she wears something. Lord, does this please you? Can I stand before your holy throne wearing this? Second question. How does the way I looked, I look, project the image of purity and holiness to the world? Do I look like the world or am I different? Am I holy? The word of God calls us holy priesthood. So let us dress not as the world, but as holy, sanctified, separate women. If you dress modestly and with shamefacedness now, godly men will be attracted to you and not the ones that are only after looks and sex appeal. Also, you will be able to carry on this virtue in your future marriage and never shave, shame your future husband by appearing in public in immodest clothes. Also, you will be able to teach your children the virtue of biblical modesty and not be a hypocrite. Now, we will uh, talk about the purity in word. P 
Purity in word implies that you stay away from gossip, guarding your tongue. You do not curse. You speak in not pol your speech is not polluted by slang. You speak with respect to the elders. The less you, time you spend chatting, texting, updating your status on Facebook, the less you will be exposed to gossiping. In the multitude of words, there wanteth no sin, but, but he that refraineth his lips is wise. Proverbs 10, 19. If you have a friend who gossips, drop her without any regrets, or will, you will be turned into a gossiper also. Look up a couple of ver verses on this subject, Proverbs 13, 20, and Proverbs 11, 13. Also, be aware of trying to talk like the world, trying to learn the coolest words of your friends that your friends might use. I cannot stand sometimes to hear young women talk because sp their speech is so polluted by ugly slang. And it is sad, it is true. Um, sometimes when I hear a girl in line and she'll be talking on the phone and all you could hear is just that, it just, you just cannot hear even what she's talking about except just slang, slang, slang. Your word should be holy and pure, fitly spoken and few. That's another good, the good key, few. Be slow to speak. A word fitly spoken is like apples of gold and peaches of silver. Proverbs 25, 11. What a beautiful picture that is. That's how your word should be. Like apples of gold. What can be more beautiful than a golden beautiful apple? and in ornaments of silver. It just, it's beautiful, it's beautiful. There's nothing, I, when I imagine that, there's nothing more beautiful than that. Pray for the Lord to fill your speech with wise words inspired by his spirit. Glorify him with your speech. Here is an eye opener for you. For the most part, your polluted speech, if you do have one, not only sounds silly and ugly, but it also brings reproach to the name of the Lord. And for every idle word spoken, you will give an account of the day, of, the day of judgment. Be aware of innocent idle talk. The more I live, the more I am aware of it. That's why lately I have almost been avoiding the internet and the phone because I just, it's just, I, 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 that's not what I want to spend my life on, is just innocent idle talk. Um, your ability to weight your words and take them extremely seriously will greatly contribute to the peace and understanding in your future family when you get married. So learn how to express yourself eloquently and beautifully with grace so you can be easily understood by your husband in the future. He also will not have to be ashamed of you when you say something that is unwise in the public or talk over him with disrespect. If you know you have a problem with talking too much or talking disrespectfully, you need to learn how to stop by the power of the Spirit. Pray the Lord produces in you a gentle and quiet spirit which is precious in the sight of the Lord. Also, the way you talk to your parents and elders will reflect how we will talk to your husband in the future. So right now, stop and think. What does my speech consist of? Do I communicate eloquently? Ask your parents, ask your brothers and sisters, ask people around you, a godly wise woman, that she can evalu evaluate your speech and tell you openly and truly where, what, what are the areas of your speech where you should work upon. Purity of eyes. This is our next point. We're going to talk about purity of eyes. Look up, please. Um, Proverbs 27 and 20, and Proverbs 15 and 28. Those verses will encourage you to seek and guard the purity of your eyes. Jesus said, if your eye is pure, your whole body will be pure. What you put before your eyes directly, directly, directly affects your purity. If you set your eyes on worldly magazines, TV shows, movies, you are compromising your purity with the things that the Lord hates. Here's the list of biblical, here's the list of the worldly things the Lord hates when your eyes are upon everything. That's the list. 
the whole world lies under the power of the wicked one, 1 John 5.19, and it is corrupt, 2 Peter 1.4. Everything that is in the world is the lust of the flesh, the, eyes of the, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So do not be like Dina, who went to look at the daughters of the land, allured by their fancy, covers of fancy magazines, TV, peer pressure, the only safe place for you is at home, under the shadow of God's wings and the protection of your father and your mother. So then, when you get married, you will be able to teach your children how to guard their eyes, and you will not be, able, you will not be a hypocrite because you did it yourself. For a pure Christian lady, the world should be a strange, unattractive place because she is satisfied with the Lord and romance with Him. She does not prostitute herself with the alluring idols of the world. Her heart is undivided, not, not pulled in different directions. And if you feel that you are pulled in different directions, it means that you have no convictions or standards. You are unstable in all your ways, and you're double-minded. So you have to correct that by the power of the Holy Spirit and actively pursue the purity of the eyes, which means get rid of those things that you believe that they pollute, pollute your purity, which is TV, magazines, and things that allure you. Now let us talk about purity in behavior, being chaste. Please look up 1 Corinthians verse 6, verses from 18 to 20, and chapter 7, verse 9. This is for your personal study. The behavior of a beautiful lady is above reproach. Nobody can find fault with her, even if they tried. She realizes that every move she makes, she makes in the presence of the holy God and his holy angels. She doesn't flirt with men. It doesn't make excuses for, makes excuses for flirting, frivolous behavior. She even gently reproves other sisters who flirt, being her sister's keeper. She does not allow men to touch her frivolously and inappropriately because her body is not her own, but the Lord's. Remember, my sister, your body is not your own. It is the Lord. She keeps the Lord's temple clean, pure, and swept. So the spirit can freely breathe in her and not, can, and not be quenched. Do not be deceived. If you allow a young man first to touch, I guarantee and 100% that a kiss will follow and then I better not go there. But situations that compromise purity can be avoided. If you stay away from dating, and wait for the one who will be willing to court you with intention of getting married. And of course, if you allow your heart to be satisfied with romancing Jesus. Also, be aware of hidden, hidden dangers that can challenge your purity and chastity. Guys at the youth group, Christian conferences, or camps can challenge you and pressure you to compromise your convictions but you flee sexual immorality at all costs and alert the leadership or parents of the dangers and the impure leaven in the group so the purity of other sisters can be preserved. Remember, you should not even eat with a brother who is sexually immoral. Look at Proverbs 20, 11. If a brother is tempting you now, he cannot be trusted to be a faithful husband later. Most likely, he will be unfaithful and struggle with lust or even worse, pornography, because he cannot control his passions right now. True love is patient and does not seek his own, her own. Also, a sister who is trying to guard her purity will stay away from the spotlight. She lets others, sh others shine instead and takes the lowest position of a servant. She has a humble assessment of self, preferring others before herself. She seeks to serve, not to be served. And when she is finally married, she will continue to serve her husband selflessly and unconditionally. <laughs>